December 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Zechariah chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. In the eighth month of Darius' second year, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Iddo, as follows. The Lord was very angry with your ancestors. Therefore say to the people, The Lord who rules over all says, Turn to me. Says the Lord who rules over all, and I will turn to you. Says the Lord who rules over all. Do not be like your ancestors to whom the former prophets called out, saying, The Lord who rules over all says, Turn now from your evil wickedness. But they would by no means obey me, says the Lord. As for your ancestors, where are they? And did the prophets live forever? But have my words and statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, not outlived your fathers? Then they paid attention and confessed. The Lord who rules over all has indeed done what he said he would do to us because of our sinful ways. On the twenty-fourth day of the eleventh month, the month Shabbat, In Darius' second year, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Iddo, as follows. I was attentive that night and saw a man seated on a red horse that stood among some myrtle trees in the ravine. Behind him were red, sorrel, and white horses. Then I asked one nearby, What are these, sir? The angelic messenger who replied to me said, I will show you what these are. Then the man standing among the myrtle trees spoke up and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk about on the earth. The writers then agreed with the angel of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtle trees. We have been walking about on the earth, and now everything is at rest and quiet. The angel of the Lord then asked, Lord, who rules over all, how long before you have compassion on Jerusalem and the other cities of Judah, which you have been so angry with for these seventy years. The Lord then addressed good, comforting words to the angelic messenger who was speaking to me. Turning to me, the messenger then said, Cry out that the Lord who rules over all says, I am very much moved for Jerusalem and for Zion, but I am greatly displeased with the nations that take my grace for granted. I was a little displeased with them. But they have only made things worse for themselves. Therefore, says the Lord, I have become compassionate towards Jerusalem and will rebuild my temple in it, says the Lord who rules over all. Once more a surveyor's measuring line will be stretched out over Jerusalem. Speak up again with the message of the Lord who rules over all. My cities will once more overflow with prosperity and once more The Lord will comfort Zion and validate his choice of Jerusalem. Once again I looked, and this time I saw four horns. So I asked the angelic messenger who spoke with me, What are these? He replied, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Next the Lord showed me four blacksmiths. I asked, What are these going to do? He answered, These horns are the ones that have scattered Judah so that there is no one to be seen. But the blacksmiths have come to terrify Judah's enemies and cut off the horns of the nations that have thrust themselves against the land of Judah in order to scatter its people. I looked again and there was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, where are you going? He replied to measure Jerusalem in order to determine its width and its length. At this point, the angelic messenger who spoke to me went out, and another messenger came to meet him, and said to him, Hurry, speak to this young man as follows. Jerusalem will no longer be enclosed by walls because of the multitude of people and animals there. But I, the Lord says, will be a wall of fire surrounding Jerusalem and the source of glory in her midst. You there flee from the northland, says the Lord. For like the four winds of heaven, I have scattered you, says the Lord. Escape Zion, you who live among the Babylonians. For the Lord who rules over all says to me that for his own glory he has sent me to the nations that plundered you. 
for anyone who touches you touches the pupil of his eye. I am about to punish them in such a way, he says, that they will be looted by their own slaves. Then you will know that the Lord, who rules over all, has sent me. Sing out and be happy, Zion, my daughter, for look, I have come. I will settle in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations will join themselves to the Lord on the day of salvation, and they will also be my people. Indeed, I will settle in the midst of you all. Then you will know that the Lord, who rules over all, has sent me to you. The Lord will take possession of Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and he will choose Jerusalem once again. Be silent in the Lord's presence. All people everywhere, for he is being moved to action in his holy dwelling place. Got it this point it's about 20 years ish or so after your people uh, who were exiled to Babylonia came back um, they're very lost uh, even though there was great rejoicing obviously when they returned and and the uh, platform the basis for the temple was was started they were still lost they were still under persecution uh, we see very uh, common similarities between Haggai and Zechariah, uh, written at very similar times as well. But Zechariah is a little bit different in the sense that he speaks so much of the coming Messiah, of, of Jesus Christ. In fact, so much that we see over 60 different quotes from Zechariah in the New Testament, almost 70 of them actually. Uh, in the New Testament, all speaking about these prophecies having to do with the coming Messiah. But we start off Zechariah first and foremost with eight visions. Uh, we get to hear the first three uh, in the readings today about horses, about horns, and about a measuring tape. All eight of these snapshots that we're going to be seeing, including these three we just just read, are all this powerful, you You have been sent into exile because I was angry at you. And you had every right to be angry at them for turning away from you. Uh, now your anger has subsided and they are being allowed out of exile and a remnant is returning. And these visions are the start of you moving amongst your people again um, and, and how they're responding, basically. The four horses uh, respond back that, that the earth is at peace, meaning the people who have um, done horrid things to your people uh, are at peace. They're fine. Uh, so now it's time to switch that, to allow your people to be at peace and to go after the people who have tormented and persecuted your people. And that's where the four horns come in. Uh, going after the groups of people and the nations who have persecuted uh, your people, Jerusalem, Judah, and so forth. And, and then the final one, which to me is one of the most fascinating ones, is this man with a measuring tape showing this amazing city that will rise again, this Jerusalem that will rise again, that won't even have walls. But don't worry about the protection because you our God as the wall of fire surrounding Jerusalem and the source of glory as you put it in her midst. This rejuvenation that takes place is something that we should hold really tight to our hearts because we go through this on a daily basis and throughout the big moments in our life. We have times where we sin and we may feel really far apart from you. Maybe that whole exile feeling. And then you work on our hearts and you show us and you guide us and, and we repent and, and we come back into this relationship, one in which you were already waiting for us. We just had to figure things out on our own. But we're still kind of lost and dazed uh, at our choices of sin, very much like this remnant that has come back from, from Babylon. And then you, with your arms open wide, hold us, comfort us, and show us incredible grace and mercy, which is exactly what you did for them. And then you say, not only do I, of course, forgive you, and I am thrilled 
that you are back. But guess what? We're going to be bigger and better than before. Because of what you've gone through, you're going to learn so much. And I, the Lord your God, am going to take care of this. And you do, always, in spectacular fashion. So God, these, these stories that sometimes may speak from thousands and thousands of years ago and may seem almost a little bit foreign to us, being exiled in kings and remnants and temples, allow us to see that application in our own life. That there are times when we put ourselves into self-exile uh, through our sinful choices. And you and your incredible compassion and love for us bring us out of exile. Teach us what we need to know and, and help us to move forward the whole time protecting us just like you protected Jerusalem back then and, and continue to do so until your son comes back. Thank you for being a God of reconciliation, a God of compassion, and a God who loves us beyond our choices of sin and our sinful nature. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.